nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. So the next topic I'm going to talk about is applying photonic crystals to designing waveguides, which are a critical application for telecommunications. So basically, the strategy with the 2D photonic crystal waveguides, in principle, is very simple. You essentially have a waveguide, which is potentially established in a 2D photonic crystal, which is just straight. But you're not restricted to go straight. You can actually go this way and then go around a bend like this. Okay. So then if you're going around a bend uh, with this waveguide, then uh, what's causing you to go around the bend is not uh, anything except uh, the, uh, the lack of reflection or lack of suppression of density states in the region that you defined as the waveguide. So in other words, you have to remove the rods or holes in the uh, specific region that you want to guide light in order to get it to basically go in the direction that you're looking for. So if you want it to go like this, then you have to go in a certain uh, region where uh, you have no rods or no holes. So just to show you more detail, like what is the band structure associated with this? So if you just have a, a straight waveguide, then if you define this blue region here as basically the lower energy bands, and then this blue region up here is the higher energy bands, then this red line here, which is from the Photonic Crystals textbook, shows you the guided mode of the structure. Um, and you can see it has like kind of a almost conventional type uh, uh, guide, guidance diagram that's similar to like a fiber. But the key difference is that it's guided at relatively low wave vectors, whereas in a fiber uh, waveguide, usually you have a high wave vector. So this is the difference between being above the light line, where basically uh, k is less than n omega over c, versus below the light line, where k is greater than n omega over c. And you can see the result of the, uh, the guidance of the light here. This is showing just the electric field as a function of position, and it's strongly localized to the waveguide, so it's analogous to what happens uh, in the, uh, the core of a single mode fiber, for example. So uh, this just showing an explicit comparison between how the guiding works in the two types of waveguides. So on the left-hand side, you have kind of the conventional fiber optic type structure, and then on the right-hand side, you have this low index region. This low index region without the rods in this case is what guides the light instead. Um, now, what happens if you have defects? Uh, so what's interesting about uh, the contrast between photonic crystal waveguide and conventional index guide waveguide is that if you have defects in the structure, it doesn't necessarily cause a great deal of scattering. Okay, And the reason is because if the Photonic crystal is large enough, your mode, which might be scattered here, is actually forbidden to propagate through the photonic crystal. So that gives you some tolerance to uh, scattering. And then also the concept of backscattering is actually blocked by what's called uh, momentum conservation. Uh, so momentum conservation basically prevents light that's going this way, typically from going back this way. And so that means that actually now you can introduce these sharp bends. And there is actually some uh, theory uh, that goes back actually quite a, quite a while showing that if you essentially can strongly confine light or really any wave in uh, even a sharply bent structure, then you can actually find resonant frequencies where transmission can still be very high. And then this actually showing the mathematical expression for uh, the specific values at which you get high transmission. And so basically this is associated with having a resonance between the incoming light into the curve, which is shown here, and then the resonance itself. And then finally, uh, this outgoing waveguide up here. Okay. Uh, so then basically what happens is um, whereas if you had like basically a completely 
non-optimized design in the bend, you would potentially get backscattering, like right at this corner, which is shown here. Um, if you optimize it, you don't have to have that happen. And so in this case, actually, this paper showed that you can get like over 99% transmission around a sharp bend. And so that's really important because that allows you to miniaturize all these optical interconnects uh, so that they're on the wavelength scale. And then uh, that, that is kind of a building block for some more advanced structures.